Okay, this is a classroom at California University of Pennsylvania. It is an advanced classroom. There are uh, touch panels at each student location and a push to talk microphone at each, uh, every other seat. Um, this is the classroom. There's confidence monitors in the back. It's a dual projection system. Camera in the front some spike speakers and then there's also a camera in the back between those two uh, TVs a large rack of equipment uh, that's stored inside that closet there so what I'm gonna do today is just walk you through the programming portion of it on the touch panel um, there's a large smart symposium high definition a lectern microphone keyboard touch panel and document camera so from here, um, when you first walk into the classroom, you'll see two buttons, uh, Start System Presentation and Start Video Conference. Or I'm sorry, I'm going to do Start System Presentation. You just press that button. The screens are dropping on both sides of me. The projectors are turning on. The monitors in the back are turning on, defaulting to the PC. And the cameras turn on and audio ramps to the appropriate levels. So you'll see that the system completely has started up on its own with one single button press. The touch panel defaults um, to PC. You can see the PC is lighted red showing that it was the last defaulted source. Um, you also have a visual indication that the PC is on due to um, the PC shown here and once the system is completely booted the PC screen will show in this area here. At the top of the screen is a routing bar. So you'll see left projector, front, right, front projector, left rear monitor, right rear monitor. And how that works is you can route any source on the left here to any destination. So for instance, um, if I wanted to route a document camera to the left projector, I would hit document camera, which it now as you can see powered itself on and it is telling us to wait while it powers up so the document camera selected is red and I will route it to the left front projector and you'll see now that below that the visual text has changed to document camera document camera you will then see the document camera on the left screen and you will see the document camera on the back left um, confidence monitor as well so the back left confidence monitor actually mirrors what you see in the front of the classroom so that you don't have to turn your back when teaching to the students. You can just continue to look straight ahead and see the uh, presentation. You do have the ability to route individually to the left or right rear monitor. And that is so that if you are displaying on the front screens a uh, laptop and Excel spreadsheet and you want to show your notes only to yourself, you can route those back to the monitors in the rear and they will show your notes. No students will see it. They'll only see uh, what's being displayed on the front system. Again, now that we're in document camera mode, you see the document camera icon here. Um, you will have the ability to zoom in and out. Um, so for instance, you can come over to the, to the Cuomo. There's a zoom button. If I zoom it in, I am now showing a much larger picture of the remote control and you can zoom in and zoom out however you like. Um, in a video conference mode people are using these document cameras now to write on. For instance you cannot write on a normal whiteboard in a video conference because the camera does not pick the whiteboard up very well. So you'll put a piece of paper down on the document camera and you'll write as, and that will be sent to the far end. One thing to note, a, a nice little tip, is um, if you are writing you may accidentally hit the zoom up or zoom down buttons and uh, you can lock these buttons out by pressing this power button really, uh, well just one time, one quick press and you'll see it now blinks. Since it's blinking, the zoom in, zoom out, nothing is active. Um, that's so that when you're writing, if your hand rubs against it, no buttons are pressed. To get out of that mode, I simply hit the power button once more. It becomes solidly lit, and I now have the ability to zoom in and zoom out once again. There's also a nice little preview monitor 
on the document cameras so you know when it is actually in line. You have the ability to select a laptop or a Blu-ray DVD, which I do not have either of those right now, but you would simply um, select that and then route it accordingly. You have the ability to control the lighting. If I select lighting, it brings up a lighting page. You have presets on your right. So for instance, if I hit all off, you'll notice the real-time feedback, everything goes off, and the room itself is now dark. Um, the presets are set up. So preset one is a certain presentation mode, which is all lights on. You will be able to just individually hit down, and certain lights will turn off, um, which is happening around me. I had just turned off these lights. So I'm going to go back to uh, all lights on, and that's the lighting portion of this uh, demo. I have the ability to control microphones. Um, right now my lectern mic is muted and that's why it's red. I can simply unmute it by hitting volume up. The volume goes up, volume goes down. Again the microphone shows you on the microphone page and that's the same for your wireless handheld mic and your wireless lavalier microphone. So very simple to use and that is basically it for normal presentation mode. You have the ability to select any source and route it to any of the two projection screens or rear monitors. Um, something that's only available in the advanced room is this nameplate button, which you see down here. It says activate nameplates. I'm going to press that and a seating chart of the room comes up. Five buttons, student login, start pool, show results to students, quit student nameplates, and the return button. So for instance, when I hit the students login button, I now have given the ability to students all across the classroom to log in through a virtual keypad shown on their seat. So for instance, I am now walking up to this. They are motion activated. You've seen it turned on. And I can enter my name through a virtual keypad. Sorry for the bumpiness. Um, so I'll enter my name. Bill, enter, enter my last name, Macintosh, enter, it says, are you sure that's your name? I will say yes, and my name is now shown. The name will actually show on this LED panel located in front of the student's seat. We are now just integrating that, but Bill will be shown on the first line and Macintosh will be shown on the second. You can see on the touch panel, now that I've logged in, that I am in seat location one. My name is written there, and once everybody logs into the entire system, you will have a complete seating chart with everybody's name showing on the LED plates in front of the students. I can now begin a start pull, which is down here. Start pull will allow each student to uh, basically press A, B, C, D, or E, as you can see here, or actually uh, not available, uh, uh, basically no answer, and it takes a real-time pull of the class. So if I hit button C, it says, or I'm sorry, this is D, so A, B, C, D, E. Um, if I hit D, it says your answer is D. The professor will actually see the real-time result of that. So now I have one vote for D, one vote for E, and one vote for N, A. Some people were logged in uh, prior to the start of this. That's why they have um, those numbers there now. So when finished, I can then say show results to students. Those results then are pushed back to each student touch panel so that they can see the results of the poll. And you can do that over and over again. Um, so you can use that for taking polls in class, select A, B, C, D, or E, which is the correct answer, or who did the best presentation, to um, using A, B, and C as uh, something more creative. So for instance, I can take a real-time uh, count on how fast or how slow I'm teaching. I can say press A if I'm going too fast, B just right, C I'm going too slow, and the professor will actually have here a real-time poll of um, how quickly or how slowly they are going. 
when I'm all finished with this page, I can say quit nameplates. That actually locks students out, but we'll keep their names there. And then I can just return to the main page. And that is it for um, the pooling section in the student touch panels. Finally, I have the ability to go into video conferencing mode. I do that by hitting the system power button. That gives me the option to individually turn off the projectors, the monitors, or the screens. I can do a total shutdown where I can start video conferencing mode. I will uh, start video conferencing mode. The only thing that changes here is you now have a, a different GUI interface. Um, the PC is still selected. I have a directory button where I can make a phone call. So I can call classroom to classroom or I can call um, to any off-site campus, business, country I want to. I hit the directory button. I go to my contacts just using this scroll bar. And there you'll see um, some classrooms that we've recently called. It's as simple as going down to that classroom and hitting call and that will connect. I'm not going to do it now because there's classes in those rooms and uh, therefore I don't want to interrupt. So um, the only difference in this mode is you'll click near end sources to bring up the sources and I can then send uh, two sources. It'll send send a primary, send a secondary and basically I'm just sending a source to the far end. Just how I was doing in presentation mode, I can select any two sources and I can send them to the two monitors on the far end. So for instance, teacher camera, I am now sending that to one source, which you can see has now overridden it. You can see on the back screen that I am now showing myself on the one screen. I still have the menu up so I can get rid of that. And then um, I'm also showing uh, teacher cam up here. Let me get rid of that menu real quick. Okay, so now the menu is gone and I'm just showing teacher camera. The only additional source other than um, the teacher camera is the student camera. So I have the PC, laptop, document camera, teacher camera, and student camera. The student camera is exactly what you'd expect. I can send it to a source. And as you can see on my little preview window here, I'm sending myself and a student camera. Where back here you can see I'm sending the desks and the desks are also showing up here. So basically I can send any of those five sources to the side in any combination. I have volume control, I have lighting control. Um, one thing that is pretty neat is if Greg, you'll help me out by pressing a push to talk microphone. If Greg pushes that microphone in the back, the mic zooms in on the student while he's talking and then when he lets go of the microphone, it then zooms back to the uh, classroom view. And each seat actually has that functionality. So um, anytime you're a distance ed mode um, and someone presses their microphone, the camera will zoom in on that student, show who's speaking, and then uh, zoom back out. And that is basically the entire functionality of the uh, distance learning mode or classroom to classroom mode. Um, your near end sources are right here. Hand remote gets you into that dialing uh, system that I showed you just by pushing directory get you in there and then I go to my contacts and then you have all your contacts there. Um, you make the call by hitting connect. I can hit call up here, hang up, microphone, lighting, everything is exactly the same as in the previous one functionality wise except I'm now doing it to a different site. That's it for the CalU uh, walkthrough of the touch panel functionality. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give Synergy Media Group at 1-888-321-0040 a call. Thank you so much.